Hello, welcome. If you've never seen my videos before and this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Uh, my name is Angela Davis and I'm the 4AM Quilter. And today I am ironing the back of a, of a quilt, with the backing of a quilt. So first, let me bring you over here. Can you see that? See that better? See the vine? Thought it was really pretty. And this is for, you ready? This is for the backing on one of the quilts that I'm going to complete to celebrate my uh, 500 subscribers mark. And what I'm doing is I hope to get both quilt tops uh, sandwiched today. And so this is the first one I'm working on. And um, I'll show you later on in the video what it looks like as I, as I pin in place and that sort of thing. But I'm very, very excited about this and uh, excited about this giveaway to my subscribers. And if you have not subscribed and you want to enter to win, subscribe. And I'll explain later on in the video how it's going to work because honestly, I'm still working out some of the kinks. Um, about how I'm going to set it up, but I wanted you to know what's happening and uh, You know what the plan is. So what I've done is I've taken the fabric and I folded it in half lengthwise so that it is two layers Can you see that it's two layers so I folded it in half lengthwise so that as I'm ironing I'm ironing both sides at the same time. And I'm using a very hot steam iron. The hottest steam setting I can use on my iron, that's what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is here's the fold, but I'm not pressing a seam and I'm not pressing that fold. I'm only going up to about four inches away from it because when I'm done ironing, this whole section, I'm going to open it up and then iron that center because I don't want to iron a crease in that center. But I find that this method um, helps save me time because I'm, I'm ironing both sides of this at once. Instead of opening this up flat and ironing it, it would take longer. But in order to do this, it, your iron must be on a very hot setting and I'm using steam. Very, uh, so you have to be careful uh, when you touch this right after you take that uh, iron off of your, uh, your fabric. So now I'm opening it up and I'm pressing the middle. And the middle is, is where the seam is. Now this seam is one seam and it's going to go across the horizontal of the back of the quilt. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it, turn it to the other side. Now, because I flipped it, I have to make sure that I maintain the direction of that seam. Okay. It's going to move down here nice and slow. Get that seam nice and flat. Okay. Now. Now, here it is. Okay, now I'm going to turn you here. Okay, now the quilt backing goes right side down. Okay, now I like masking tape for this. Some people buy clips. Okay, now, now I got it. Now, in order for this to work, I have to go slow. Oh, that's ridiculous, because I bought cheap tape. 
Well, it's what I get. Okay, so. Now the batting that I'm using is 100% cotton. And I think it's cream rose. I opened it up yesterday before work just so that some of the wrinkles can sort of relax a little bit. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I folded it so that the center fold is at my center seam of my backing. Just sort of separate it and then unfold it. Just gently pulling on it. Um, I have poked holes in my batting because I go to pull on it and I didn't realize, oops, I pulled a little too roughly and okay, now we have, you know, a hole. But don't fret, don't fret if that happens. Just sort of mend it a little bit. We all have scraps of batting. Now, let me just smooth this out. This is a nice thin cotton batting, which a thin cotton batting sort of gives you an antique look uh, when you wash your quilt. Gives it a nice little, gives it an antique look. So I'm just concerned with what's on top of my table. I'm not concerned about what's draped over either end. I'll, I'll deal with that when I go to shift the quilt over, okay? My quilt top, I'm gonna give it another press. It's the double nine patch. And I did a video about it. And uh, I can link it below if you wanna see it. Just, it's more of a conversation than a how-to video. Or wait, did I do a how-to video? I might have. I think I did. Here we go. Let's get this steam nice and flat. These were uh, nine patch blocks that I did a few years back. Quite a few years back. And, um... They're not perfect. I, I have to tell you that before you, you know, enter to win for the contest, I have to tell you they're not perfect. Okay. But they're fun. They're fun little nine patches. Like I can see a couple seams that are a little wonky. You know, it was just one of those. It was like, I just wanted to sew, you know, I just wanted to sew. And I remember thinking, I want to do a double nine patch. I had been thinking about doing a double nine patch for a very long time. And I had such fun picking out all these colors, arranging them. But I wasn't being fussy. If a seam was a little off here and there, I did not mind. I just felt that that added to you know, the look of the quilt. Because when you look at antique quilts and books, or you're in, you know, antique shops or thrift stores, their seams were not always perfect, you know? Let's face it. You know, it, it sometimes it's about the process, not about, it's about the process and the enjoyment. It's not about, you know, this is a quilt that's gonna be, keep a loved one warm. You know, comfort it. It's not going to hang in a museum, but it's going to be cherished for being made by someone's hands. So I didn't care if there was a seam here and there that was off a little bit. I was okay with that. I like those little imperfections in my quilts. And uh, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. I just do, because it's me, it's Angela. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to open it up, do that center. Okay, almost done. Almost done. Let's see here where I'm at. Yes. You know what? I have a lot of little threads here that I need to snip. I'm amazed at, you know, as you're sewing, how many little threads we miss as we're going along. You know? Oh my gosh. And this one has a lot of little seams because of the double line patch. So there's a lot of little threads here that are peeking out at me. <laughs> so I think for the giveaway, once, once I'm at the point where I'm at the binding, you know, and I'm nearing the end, I'll announce the giveaway, I'll announce the start date and the end date, and then I'll do the prize drawing. I think that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm researching how to do a prize drawing. Um, I need to get a separate email set up for the 4AM quilter. And that way anything pertaining to my YouTube videos, I could funnel through there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and then I'm going to fold it again so that this point is my center, okay? Now I'm going to unfold it this way. Okay, now remember I'm only concentrating on what's on top of the table. Like I said, it's not perfect, okay? I want to warn you, if you subscribe to enter the drawing, it has some imperfections, okay? Um, like here, there's a little pucker in the seam. You know, some of my squares aren't perfectly square. That's okay, that's okay. Now, once everything on the tabletop is flat and smooth, now I will begin pinning just what's on the tabletop, okay? And I had to buy Uh, new safety pins because, or yes, because Angela can't find her tin of safety pins. I don't know where they are. Have no clue. These are special safety pins, and I've talked about this before. Here they are. Here, see them? They have a little curve in them. And that curve has two purposes. One, it's easier to get in and out of your fabric. Because of the curve up, it goes straight in and comes straight out. Number two, the pin won't lay flat against the fabric, so it won't leave an indent if it's been in there a long time, okay? But, but honestly, I think it's mostly for the ease the ease of pinning. Now, when I pin, this is how I do it. You're supposed to pin every, oh, I'd say four or five inches. This quilt is going to, both quilts are going to be what I call utility quilting. How I describe that is the quilt ink, the quilting is going to be across the main seam lines. So I'm gonna have quilting along the main seam lines where the blocks are and along the outside where the border is. 
and then everything else in the middle I'm going to tie. Um, I've always enjoyed tying quilts and so that's what I'm going to do for you. And so um, if I was going to heavily quilt this, I would be pinning a lot closer together so that there wouldn't be any shifting. After I get this pinned, uh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee because I haven't had my coffee yet today or tea or anything for that matter. I've had some water. So that's about it. So I'm going to sit and relax and have some coffee and then I'll continue with the pinning. Now don't worry about these outside edges. Um, as I shift, I'll be shifting so that I can pin all the way to the edge. It's very important to pin all the way to the edge because if you don't, you're going to get puckers and you're going to get what's called fold overs, meaning you'll end up with the fabric folding in on itself and then you'll stitch through that inadvertently and then you'll have to end up taking it out and fixing it. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> I made that mistake. But as I shift this, I'll be pinning farther out. Right now, like I said, I'm concentrating on what's on the top of the table. This batting is nice and thin. It's going to make a nice antique finish. It's 100% cotton. It's definitely going to give it a nice antique finish. I'm going to like that. For whoever gets these quilts, I'm going to like that a lot, knowing that it has that, that look to it. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to stop here, unplug the iron, I'm going to go rest and have my coffee. I'll see you later. Okay, I'm back. Uh, what I've done is I've done, shifted it and done the other side. Now I'm doing the last side. So what I've done is I've just shifted it just enough so that there's still a section that's pinned that's on top of the table. And then the section that I am going to pin, I've just flipped over. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my nails like this, my fingers like this, and I'm just taking the batting and I'm smoothing it out before I flip the top back over because this doesn't always get those little, those little wrinkles out and folds out, okay? But scraping it with your nails does. Now I'm going to fold this back over. Okay. I'm going to shift it just a little bit more. Now some people, they do not pin based. They spray based. I've never spray based it before. If you do spray based, please follow the manufacturer's instructions for spray basting. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim. Because I'm doing my own quilting and I'm going to be tying this, I'm only gonna leave like two to four inches on the outside. If you are having this machine quilted by a long armor, you must meet with your long armor and they will discuss with you how much fabric allowance they need on the outside of the quilt, depending on the size of their frame and their size of their machine, okay? But because I'm gonna be quilting this on my home machine, I don't need as much.
Before I go to start quilting, I'm going to add a few more pins to this. But right now I'm putting just enough in to get it together. And I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to begin the other quilt top. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Took a little break, got some things done, cut the grass. You know, grass needed cut. <laughs> so, both quilts are sandwiched with their backing, their batting, and their top. And isn't it amazing how once the quilt has those layers, it just really takes on a life. I mean, it really takes on that, that just comfy, cozy, you know, it just really brings that quilt to life. And I love how that 100% cotton batting is feeling. I think it's going to give uh, both quilts a very nice drape and an antique look, a uh, vintage look. And like I said, what I plan on doing is I plan on straight stitching long stitches down the long lines of the quilt and now we'll anchor everything together and then I think in between I'm going to do little ties um, amongst uh, the double nine patch and I think that will really be in keeping with the style of the quilt and this one because I have orange in this I have some orange fabric and I have some yellow. I'm gonna see about making the binding out of the orange or the yellow, depending on how it looks. And then this one, I don't have any more of this blue left. This was the last of it. Um, it is wide enough, the borders, where I could turn the front to the back and stitch that in place. And that's a perfectly acceptable way to do a binding, finishing a quilt. Um, I did think when I was putting the border on this that I felt as though the border was a little bit wide. So I think I'm going to make that decision once I'm finished doing the quilting and the tying. And I'll decide on that at that time. So today is Saturday. And oh, here's another thread. I keep finding these stray threads on the top of my quilt. Today is Saturday. Let's see. July 20th, 21st, 22nd, <laughs> one of those, I mean, we're in the 20s, early 20s of July, and it's Saturday. So, like I said, once these are finished, I'm going to do a separate video where whoever wants to get in the drawing to win one of these quilts can subscribe and leave a comment. And that's how you will get in the drawing for one of these quilts. But I'm not there yet. So keep watching. Okay, keep watching. Very excited about this. I'm very excited about this giveaway. And I'm just very excited about this whole process. And again, be patient with me. I'm still learning. So I'm going to be learning how to do the drawing, the raffle, as I do my research. But I'm going to say goodnight for now. It's late afternoon. I'm going to hop in the shower. And uh, I will see you next time. My name's Angela Davis, and I'm the 4AM Quilter. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Take care.